here, and we're going to do a re hey guys game here, we're going to do a reaction video on a death battle called um, Goku vs. Superman, so let's go. I am on my computer, and we're going to watch the death battle. This episode of Death Battles brought to you by Slim Jim. Slim Jim. Born to dying races and sent to brave new worlds, these two alien saviors are legendary. And everybody wants to know who would kick whose ass in a fight. And I mean everyone. Goku, the tenacious Super Saiyan. And Superman, the Man of Steel. To ensure no questions are left unanswered, we will be acknowledging every official resource for both combatants. Though the original writings hold precedence, no mistranslations allowed. Also, as he was retconned and rebuilt in 1986, we will be examining the modern Superman. Considering Supes pre-86 could make up new superpowers on the fly and destroy entire solar systems by sneezing, probably a good idea. He's whiz and I'm boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. was born to a low-class Saiyan warrior on the planet Vegeta. He narrowly escaped the extinction of his entire race when he was sent to Earth with a single, simple mission. Destroy everything! Then he conveniently bumped his head and forgot about it all! Dubbed Goku by his adoptive grandfather, his life revolves around combat. He cares little for anything else, unless food is involved. Can I have another bowl, please? <laughs> At 12 years old, he was trained by Master Roshi in Kame Sen and Ryu, which pushes a person to superhuman levels. Complementing his Saiyan biology, Goku's superhuman strength, speed, and senses skyrocketed. He developed numerous fighting techniques, including the fast-moving after image and the dragon throw, his trademark grapple. At 15, he was already so powerful that the only worthy teachers left were gods. And a talking cat, but mostly gods! He was only a kid and his power level was already enormous. It's over 9,000! Not yet! Okay, now it is. What? 9,000? False! In the Japanese manga, Goku's power level at that time was 8,000. But it doesn't even matter because power levels are absurd. The entire point of introducing them was to show how unreliable and meaningless they were. By relying on power levels, the villains constantly underestimated the heroes. Therefore, using them to judge Goku's abilities is pointless. Besides, the Daizenshu says that... Yeah, what now? The official Dragon Ball Encyclopedia. It states power levels eventually become immeasurable. Not because they are so high they can't be measured, but because the characters, and hopefully the audience, have realized just how futile these numbers are. I'm still ten times stronger than you are. That may be true, but strength isn't the only thing that matters. We cannot judge Goku by his power level, nor can we through power scaling, the theory that he can achieve the same feats as lesser Dragon Ball characters. Goku's abilities are tailored to his personal training and experiences, not to mention anatomy. I can breathe in space and you can't. However, Goku does have a knack for mimicking key techniques. Key is metaphysical, made up of things such as vigor, courage, and being in one's true mind. It's basically a kind of natural life force energy and is a fundamental component of Taoist medicine and martial arts. Oh, and uh, it's not magic. Dragon Ball creates a very distinct difference between Ki and magic. Ki is dependent on the physical ability of the user, and magic users like Bobbity are clearly using something so different. Much. Goku harnesses and manipulates his Ki energy into badass lasers and stuff like Ki blasts, energy barriers, and the Destructo Disc, which he totally stole from Krillin. The Solar Flare blinds opponents, and the Spirit Bomb puts energy from other things into a giant death ball that takes friggin' forever to make. And energy taken from sentient beings must be voluntary. The spirit bomb is fueled by positive energy, which is only effective against those filled with negative energy. 
aka evil. In the Super Android 13 film, Goku actually absorbs the key gathered from the spirit bomb, becoming one with it, transforming and manipulating the energy himself. But his two best moves are the Dragon Fist, where he supercharges his punch with a golden key dragon, and the one and only Kamehameha, a giant focus beam which every kid in the world has always wanted to do. Don't lie, you've tried it. Goku also uses key for telekinesis and high-speed flight. He can even sense the power and location of other key sources, then teleport directly to them with instant transmission. Which is light speed! You dematerialize and travel as a mass of light. Again, false. This is another mistake in translation. According to the original manga, instant transmission is, well, instant. Its only flaw is that it requires concentrated focus. Ah, it's not good! I can't concentrate! Also, he can read minds. Wait, what? Is there no limit to this key thing? There is. Goku draws from a finite pool of key energy. So to increase his power, Goku perfected the art of Kaioken. This amplifies Goku's key, multiplying his strength, speed, defense, and so on. Only one problem. It puts a giant strain on his body and could even kill him. Kaioken times 20! Goku does not have to rely solely on his key. He wields the Power Pole, a magical staff which expands and contracts. When he's hurt, eating a Sensu Bean heals him up. And to get around, he rides the Flying Nimbus, a flying cloud which probably tastes like cotton candy. Still, the Kaioken was Goku's trump card for some time until a fateful battle with the tyrant Frieza, who pushed Goku past his limits to achieve the legendary form of Super Saiyan. There are four different levels of Super Saiyan, each drastically boosting his power. Like the Kaioken, each form does burden his body, though Goku has trained to minimize this. Super Saiyan 3 multiplies the already combined power of Super Saiyan 2 by 4, but comes at a horrible price. That hair. Oh, and it pretty much destroys his body while he's using it, but my god, the hair! Fortunately for Goku, the life-sapping Super Saiyan 3 form would be trumped by his final transformation, Super Saiyan 4. This form alters his body to better endure the 4,000 times power increase. Complete with pink fur and eyeshadow! Fear the ultimate form! With each transformation, minus full power Super Saiyan 1, Goku loses some self-control, becoming more violent and instinct-prone. When I'm at this power level, it's hard for me to listen to reason. I just lose control. Goku's greatest strength is his tenacity and never give up attitude. He does not fight to defeat others, he fights to defeat himself. However, this may also be his greatest weakness. He prefers a fair fight, eager to see his opponent's maximum potential. He's about to reach his maximum! Just to be your last chance! I want him to reach his maximum. I want to fight him when he's at his best. But when the whole world is at stake, well, hindsight is 2020. And although he's more than tough enough to survive in a vacuum, he clearly needs oxygen, so no breathing in space. Plus, well, Goku's not very bright. Despite some basic schooling from Roshi, Goku has never had a day of certified formal education in his life. It took him years just to learn how to drive. But why the hell would Goku need to drive a car? Even so, Goku understands his weaknesses. To him, a formal education would just be a waste of time. He is already a genius when it comes to martial arts. And even if he does get the hell beaten out of him, he improves with every fight. And that is what Goku is all about. He thrives on becoming stronger and bursting limits, and has overcome every obstacle in his way. Even marriage. Goku might just be the greatest martial artist in fictional history. What? What are you? I am the hope of the universe. I am the answer to all living things that cry out for peace. Ally to good! Nightmare to you! Here at Edge, we know it's important to get ready. I remember getting ready. My son was in the bus. He saved everyone. He saw what Clark did. Cal-El was born to a high-class scientist on the planet Krypton. He narrowly escaped the destruction of his home world when his father sent him to Earth with the goal of preserving human life. Well, what a coincidence! Except for the whole saving human life thing. After landing on Earth, he was found and raised by the Kents, who decided to name him Clark. And weren't they surprised when they found out he was an alien with superpowers? 
years. After discovering his true heritage, Clark refused to accept his Kryptonian side. He subconsciously developed mental barriers that blocked him from attaining his full power, which he would work to uncover throughout the rest of his life. Stupid power-limiting brain! After graduating college in two years and traveling the world as a secret superhero, Clark moved to the city of Metropolis as an investigative reporter and donned the red and blue to publicly announce his presence as the Superman, defender of truth, justice, and the American way, until he renounced his American citizenship. Mild-mannered Clark kept his identity a secret with the brilliant disguise of nerdy glasses and wimpy demeanor. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Proving that people only see what they want to believe. Boomstick, that's surprisingly profound. Yeah. Since then, his power has been pretty inconsistent, he did, he did, mostly due to the writers doing whatever the hell they please. Well, there is a legitimate explanation. Superman's powers are dependent on the ultrasolar rays of the sun. By absorbing yellow or blue sunlight, his power rises. However, he cannot absorb sunlight from a red star. So, if you take away a yellow sun, you slowly take away Superman's powers. He's solar powered! They call him the world's first superhero, but sounds more like the world's first hippie to me. Now, the intensity of solar radiation disperses the further away it gets from its source. So the closer Superman is to the sun, the more solar radiation he'll absorb. So he gathers more power the higher he gets? He is a hippie! In the Justice League series, Our World's at War, Superman actually spent 15 minutes inside the sun. When he resurfaced, he was powerful enough to effortlessly move planets. He can also what? hear sounds millions of miles away, see through anything but lead, and spot things moving faster than light. He can see at a subatomic level and hear through the vacuum of space. Somehow. He can even see your soul. What? It happened. Well, weird abilities aside, Superman can freeze his enemies in ice or create hurricanes just by breathing. And to top it all off, he shoots laser beams from his eyes. His heat vision can be expanded to encompass anything within Superman's sight and reach temperatures hotter than the sun. He can incinerate entire planets in a staring contest. However, heat vision does drain his solar power much faster than any other ability, especially when he amps it up. Superman, you and with precision, heat vision can reach microscopic levels invisible to the human eye. Heat vision. Focus through your pupils like a scalpel. Instant lobotomy. <laughs> Superman can vibrate his body fast enough to phase through attacks, even turn it visible. By vibrating to just under light speed, Superman can use the infinite mass punch. The speed causes the relative mass of his fist to increase immensely and hits with the force of a supernova, which explodes at a force of 10 octillion megatons! Thanks megatons. back to the day calendar! In comparison, this is the Tsar, the most powerful bomb mankind has ever tested. 50 megatons. So that punch is like 200 septillion super nukes! That's 24 zeros, bitches! Superman is not only strong, but a genius with a super brain that can process information thousands of times faster than an average human. He is I capable mean, of strategic fighting even while well traveling movie. eight times the speed of light. So he's an expert in disabling opponents through pressure point combat and one spot demons in Valhalla alongside Wonder Woman and Thor for 1,000 freaking years. He's even learned how to protect his mind from telepathic attacks. I heard your telepathic shout before. But my mind is protected from anything deeper by a series of psychic blocks. Best I've seen, too. He also studied two Kryptonian martial arts, Torquasm Rao and Torquasm Bo. Torquasm what now? Torquasm Rao is a hard martial art in which Superman enters the Theta State, a real-life phenomenon in which a person becomes extremely receptive to information and instinct. Torquasm Vo is a mental martial art with which Superman can fight off mind domination and illusion, or even counterattack. In order to master all his power, Superman needed to break through his own self-created mental blocks. Like how when he was younger, he believed he needed to eat food and breathe oxygen like humans. When he can really just survive on solar energy alone, like some weird plant man. And thanks to some intense training from Mongol, the he managed to tear these barriers down and become the true Superman. Capable of amazing feats. Yeah, like when he obliterated an F5 tornado with a round of applause. Or when he was the filling for a planet sandwich. Or held a mini black hole in his hand. Oh, or the time he dragged the freaking Earth around. <laughs> Superman has survived some pretty crazy things. Like when cold gas hit him with 15 supernovas to the face. That was like 15 suns exploding in his face. I just said that. <laughs> Exaggeration? 
maybe, but he has survived other supernovas before. When he takes a hit, his super dense molecular structure and bioelectric aura protects him and his suit. Holy crap, he sounds invincible! Not exactly. His solar energy can be depleted over the course of a battle if he takes too much damage or remains out of sunlight for too long. This is how the monster Doomsday was able to kill him. Oh, sorry, not kill. Put him into a healing coma. <laughs> he also has several specific weaknesses, like the famous kryptonite, radioactive fragments of his home world which bring him to his knees. Any prolonged exposure will eventually kill him. He also has no special resistance to magical attacks. And he always gets all hung up on doing the right thing, even if it makes his life miserable. He does not fight for himself, but to protect others. Even the buildings in Metropolis are more valuable to him than his own life. Most of the time. The point is, Superman spends more time defending the city than actually improving his own abilities. But remove all those pesky feelings about saving people and look out! Don't say I feel like I live in a world made of cardboard, always taking constant care not to break something, to break someone. What we have here is a rare opportunity for me to cut loose and show you just how powerful I really am. All right, the combatants are. I don't. A damn Look, it's a bird. What? It's a plane. It's gonna kill us. No, it's a bird. It's a. It's a zombie. We're not being allowed in our city. Don't worry, folks. This looks like a job for Super. Whoa! <laughs> Earlier today, Superman heroically rescued Metropolis from disaster once again. The Man of Tomorrow saved a downed airliner which would have crashed Superman, huh? Wow, he looks really strong! What, that pretty boy ass clown? Please, I could kill him with my eyes closed. Even faster than that stupid transforming head job. Just look at him, wearing his underwear on the outside. I bet it chafes. Don't be so sure. I sense him. He's strong. Stronger than anyone I've ever fought. Are you serious? Finally, someone as strong as me! Oh, yeah. <laughs> I heard he's an alien! An alien? <laughs> it's only a matter of time this before he's on the planet! <laughs> Nimbus! Nice. Strong? Let's fight! Fight? Well, that's really what I do. Oh boy! This is kind of fun! You're insane! Fight! X-ray and microscopic vision let me find your body's weak points. You won't be going anywhere. What is that? Ah, Sensubi. One one? No. I'm ending this now. What? Okay, Blondie. What's going on? I am 
Son Goku. Oh. And I <laughs> am a Super Saiyan. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, this might take a while. What? Oh, 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 no, not now. Ah! Huh? Hey, what are you doing? No. Is that rock hurting you? Crip tonight. There. Okay, let's go. What? Why? I want to beat you at your best. It's no fun if it's not fair. Gee, thanks. Time, watch your blind spot. Huh. Deja vu. Is it? Game? You think this is a game? I haven't even begun to play. Styles.
There's no way. He's still alive. It's... It's the sun. He's using the sun. But I'm... I'm drained. Sun, lend me your energy. tenacity only prolongs the inevitable. Superman's power is insane! He can even patch up holes in reality just with his own static electricity. Goku did not understand Superman's connection to the sun and would not think to teleport him to a red star. Even if he did figure it out, he would run the risk of teleporting him to a blue star, which actually increases Superman's power. And if Goku destroyed the sun, the supernova would blast all the way past Mars and incinerate him. So it ultimately comes down to who is stronger, faster, and tougher. The force needed to move an object out of the sun's orbit by 1% is about 1,000 times less than the object's mass. The Earth weighs in just under 6.6 sextillion tons. This means Superman is strong enough to move 6.6 quintillion tons. But since his solar power can rise infinitely, this is nowhere near his maximum strength. You're lifting 200 quintillion tons. That's three times your record. While being timed by Max Lord, Superman flew to the sun and back in less than two minutes. That's 9.4 billion kilometers per hour. Not to mention he was fighting Wonder Stripper the whole time. True, so it's likely he can go faster. According to Batman, he can fly at least 17 billion kilometers per hour. And nobody argues with Batman. The Man of Steel can survive the impact of multiple supernovas, each with about 10 octillion megatons of force. So Superman's feats and skills are definitively measured. However, Goku's are not, and are difficult to judge. Not only does Dragon Ball heavily abuse cinematic time, but Goku's final adventures in Dragon Ball GT are incredibly inconsistent due to his untimely transformation into a child. Wow, the room got a lot bigger somehow. As Ki is dependent on the physical body, his child form likely could not handle his own Ki, sending his power into flux. It can't take it! It's too weak. My older body was more developed. And obviously we're not using future Goku, because that would require a ridiculous amount of assumptions. Not to mention we'd have to use future Superman, who's pretty much God. So like Superman, we need to judge Goku in his prime. After experimenting with dozens of different theories, we discovered an ironclad method to finding Goku's limits, which we call the gravity formula, based around his training in increased gravity. Due to his style of training and Saiyan heritage, Goku increases his abilities proportionate to the amount of force he trains under. Saiyans are born with a unique ability to fight anywhere. While in base form, Goku could lift just under 40 times. This is equivalent to 586 times normal Earth gravity, which we will use in the gravity formula, alongside the Super Saiyan power increases, to calculate Goku's maximum potential. Multiplying the 40 tons by the Super Saiyan forms means he can lift up to 160,000 tons in Super Saiyan 4. Strong enough to pick up a continent. Or my ex-wife. <laughs> right after Goku trained on King Kai's planet, which has gravity 10 times stronger than Earth's, he flew across 
Snakeway Road as fast as possible to save his friends. It took him 28 hours. Impressive, since that's one million kilometers long. Except it's filled with curves and Goku flew straight over it. So how far did he actually travel? By comparing Goku's height to a single spike, we can measure each curve. We can then remove those curves from the overall length. So it turns out Goku actually flew 307,000 kilometers, nearly 11,000 kilometers per hour. To see how fast his base form is by the end of the series, we run the Snakeway number through the gravity formula to find that his top speed clocks in at over 2.5 billion kilometers per hour, over two times the speed of light. We can determine Goku's durability through this bomb, which the brilliant Dr. Shiro designed to kill Goku at age 25, when his maximum potential was Kaioken times 4. That was intended for Goku. It was intended to be a last resort. Scans of the bomb display a TNT measurement of 657. Boma says the bomb could destroy the Earth, so this is likely measured in quadrillion megatons. Since it takes at least 53 quadrillion megatons of force to destroy the Earth. So in his final form, Goku can survive up to nearly 35 sextillion megatons. Goku doesn't rely solely on his physical abilities. He amplifies his strength and durability with Ki. But even though his Ki reserve cannot be measured, we can determine his maximum output. See, his Ki attacks do not force him backward unless he allows them to. Even when firing upward at full power, the ground beneath him remains untouched. Therefore, according to physics, his maximum output is at most equal to the amount of force he can withstand. Luckily, we just calculated that with a Jiro bomb. All right, now that we've determined Goku's maximum potential, let's compare it to Superman. Holy shit! Not even close! Now, we can keep throwing feats and equations around, but in the end, numbers cannot measure what Goku and Superman are capable of. They are both ultimate heroes, solutions to daunting problems, and achievers of the impossible. The difference is at the core of their character. Goku has never been invincible. He has very clear limits and must overcome those limits to solve the problems at hand. That's the whole point. On the other hand, Superman's story is not about the fight to become the best, but of an immigrant facing the challenge of home versus heritage. After accepting his alien side, Superman has reached his full potential, which under the endless power of the sun is essentially limitless. In short, Superman is as strong as he needs to be. So what happens when you pit a man with the power to break any limits against another who has no limits in the first place? Well, only one has limits to give at all. Goku just Kyle can't keep up with a man of steel. The winner is Superman. Wow. I didn't know Goku was not going to win the Superman one. Well, catch you next time for for Goku vs. Superman 2. Pick up the phone.